Okay, so today you're joining me in a bowl of strawberries to talk about The Mysterious Stranger by Mark Twain. Okay, so Mark Twain is, of course, a Missouri writer who everybody knows because of Tom Sawyer and Huckleberry Finn, okay? But I personally didn't know really, other than I had read some articles that he had written during the Spanish-American War, uh, I wasn't really familiar with him outside of that. And I think that uh, most people aren't. And the truth is that Mark Twain was a very prolific writer and he was an extremely popular writer at the time. And obviously we venerate him quite a bit. So I think that it would be really interesting to challenge or just question the idea if Huckleberry Finn is the only thing worth listening to or reading to reading by Mark Twain, um, or if it's possible that he had a greater thing out there. And this is particularly relevant because we we are in a time when a lot of it's 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 it is an increasingly I don't necessarily agree with the sentiment, but there it, it we're living in a time where it's very normal to challenge Huckleberry Finn's place, and I'm not going to get into that. I'm just simply going to introduce a uh, another thing for consideration, which is the Mysterious Stranger, which was Mark Twain's last book. And um, he wrote maybe six drafts of it, and each draft alternated between being set in uh, Austria and in Missouri. And when I, I believe that I'm reading the last draft. Um, and this is a very good book. Uh, just a quick thing, this cover, this image, I believe is a reference from an animated claymation movie. I saw a clip from it years ago and it terrified me, and it's a representation of how in that animated film they displayed the character, Satan, who, and who doesn't look anything like this in the book. Okay, so to give you an idea of what The Mysterious Stranger is about, is there's basically these kids and they play together in the woods, and one day there is a really perfect child uh, who joins them, and it's an angel, and uh, the angel calls himself Satan because he's, a, he's the nephew of the biblical character. And it's very philosophical in the sense that the character will take them uh, on all these trips, and uh, there, there will be many analyses of what's going on in the village and then the boys will be like well can't you intervene and help these people out and so he'll help these people out and then worse things will happen for example he'll help them out and then suddenly everybody thinks okay it's horrible that th this person is now doing well and it's impossible that they could have they could there's no way that they could have done well without the help of the devil okay so uh these people's livelihood improves and then the moment that humanity sees their livelihoods improve they are like burn the witch burn the witch okay and the uh, the character is the character of Satan is very uh, is a very wise character. He knows what's going on, and uh, honestly, okay. So this, if you aren't familiar with anime, you're gonna hate me. But he's essentially just like Kaoru from Neon Genesis Evangelion, uh, or Evangelion, who is actually there. I've I've read it said that there's there's a pub official publication. Um, I think it was a night light novella. Uh, adaptation of the Neon Genesis Evangelion story and the editor of it um, in his in his introduction actually compares Kaoru to the uh, to the angel uh, Satan from the mysterious stranger um, this is a mind-blowing book and when you get to the last chapter uh, that's gonna happen. I'm, I will never spoil anything for you, I swear. I will never spoil anything for you, but it is, it will really, it will really, basically Mark Twain will take you on a dance and uh, you'll have a good time. It'll be a little depressing at times, but whatever, it's a fun time. And then suddenly he'll just take you to the back and he'll just lay it on you and then you'll feel sad. But, you'll be a much wiser person and you will have been really challenged. You don't have to agree with what has been put in front of you, but you will have been challenged. And I think that that in itself makes you a more interesting person. Um, I think that this is definitely about America. It is a book that is, it would be, it is the, one of the most subversive things I've ever read by a author of acclaim, if not the most subversive thing I've ever written, read by a, an American author. Um, 
our country would be a very different country if instead of reading Huckleberry Finn, we read The Mysterious Stranger. It would just it would be night and day a different country. Uh, I strongly encourage people to familiarize themselves with The Mysterious Stranger. I do not recommend this. I love the cover for this edition, but the print is so small in it. Um, I recommend, I don't know what edition you should go for, but don't go with this one. But it, it shouldn't be difficult to come across this book. Um, so check out The Mysterious Stranger by Mark Twain. It's awesome. It is. It will challenge you. You might not agree with it, and it will be like fencing. And then, so you do, might block the sword of Mark Twain left and right, left and right, and then suddenly you'll get stabbed and you'll say, touche, is the experience of reading this book. And I think you'll be better for it. So thank you for watching this video. I can't wait to make another video. I tried to keep this one substantially shorter than the other just so I could kind of build momentum and keep going. So thank you. I'll see you later.